So it's time to plan for your summer vacation. And you're excited, but you're apprehensive because there's always something that you've got to think about now that you're getting older. I'm in my 70s. I have cancer. I have multiple sclerosis. I have type 2 diabetes and I'm in a wheelchair full time. So traveling is not a matter of just hopping on a plane, jumping into the car and heading off into the wild blue yonder. It takes a lot of planning, a lot of consideration for not only me, but my travel companion, in this case, my husband, Alan. Hi, I'm Denise. Welcome to Travels on My Chair. It's a beautiful day out today. Makes you just itch to start planning for summer vacation. It's been a long winter. There's things to do, places to see, but if you, are older and have mobility issues, it's not just a matter of heading out. It's a matter of planning and taking consideration. Consideration for your travel partner, their safety and your safety. So join me today, won't you? And we'll talk about some of those things that I've come across in my years of travel. Maybe it'll help you. Accessible means a lot of things to a lot of people. And you will find in your journey through life that what you think accessible means does not necessarily mean that they think the same way that you think. My girlfriends and I, from 1988 on, we take an annual girl trip. And as you can understand, as time went on and my ability to walk became less and less and less and I was using a wheelchair and we were all beginning to age a little bit, it became difficult to take these girl trips. And it became very difficult to find a place for us to stay. Now, we could have easily booked into a hotel, but what we preferred was a cottage or a vacation rental somewhere where we were all together in one home that we could sit at night and drink wine or coffee and eat baking and gossip and just and be all together in one space. So that was what we always aimed to find. And it became harder as my mobility became decreasing. An example, we decide to go down to Whidbey Island and we love Whidbey Island in Washington. It's our favorite place to go next to Vancouver Island. So I start looking, that's my job because I'm the one that needs special places. So it's my job to find the special places. Look for accessible vacation rentals. Not very many. Not very many at all. Scary how few there are out there. Really scary. First place I phoned, she said, yes, it's accessible. And I said, okay, there's a couple of things that I have to be concerned about is I'm in a wheelchair and I'm going to ask you how old your home is. And she goes, why? And I said, well, houses that are built in the 50s and 60s oftentimes have really narrow doors. The door needs to be at least, you know, 32 inches or whatever wide, or at least the width with an inch on each side of the wheel of the wheelchair or the walker so that you can get through the door. So she said, okay, well, the house should be fine. I mean, the doors seem okay, but I said, you wouldn't mind measuring them if you get a church? And no, no, that's fine. But she said, to get into the house, you have to go down a sideway, sideway to get to the suite, down, pathway down the side of the house, which is quite narrow. And when you get there, there are four stairs into the house. So that's no problem, eh? You can do four stairs. I said, well, actually, it is a problem because I'm in a wheelchair. Do you have a, a portable um, ramp that you use for people that are in a wheelchair? She goes, no, period. I went, oh, well, I'm sorry, then it won't work. I just, well, there's a handrail. I said, but I can't walk. So this lady goes, yes, we've totally renovated the house. The doors are wide enough, no problem. I said, the other concern I have is the height of the bed because a lot of places now are using high beds. Now, if any of you are in a wheelchair full time, you know what I'm talking about. Because if you can't transfer, and I can, you have to have the top of the bed mattress equal to your chair or close to so that you can have a transfer board and move over from the wheelchair to the bed. But a lot of the hotels now have these beds that are so high. Alan can barely get me on them. And that's with me being able to stand and push my bum against the, the bed. So this lady assured me that the bed was low. She said, she went and measured the doorway to the bathroom and she said, oh, that could be a problem. It's, I can't remember how wide it was, but it wasn't as wide as my wheelchair. That'll make for a very uncomfortable weekend if I can't use the facilities. So the next thing is um, the MS Society put on a big event and I write 
or did write at that time for uh, a, a publication called Shared Voices. I, they were going to present me with a, an award. So Alan and I were invited to participate in th the festivities. It was suggested that we immediately, if we needed an accessible hotel, that we should contact them immediately so that, because they only have limited amount of rooms that were totally accessible. Now remember, these are all people with MS, so probably most of them have some kind of mobility issue. I phoned the hotel and I said, we're only staying for one night, so I'm not worried if you need to give a room with a roll-in shower to someone that could use it. I can go a day without showering, no problem. And she said, oh no, this is an accessible room, but you're right, it, it is a, sh a shower over the tub, so it doesn't wouldn't be accessible for you. Uh, but the toilet is raised up and there are grab bars around the toilet. I said, oh, perfect, and she said, the doors are wide. We check into the hotel, get ready, start, go downstairs, participate in all the speeches and a dinner and so forth, and then go back up to the room, get ready for bed, Bed and I go, oh my God, the bed was so high. There was no way, no way. I stood up and held on to Alan, backed up against the mattress. It took everything in his power to be able to hoist my legs up onto the bed and it was dangerous and we both just about didn't make it. I've never actually seen a bed that high before in a hotel ever. It was uh, very distressing and when we checked out of the hotel I mentioned to the the lady about the height of the bed and you know she basically said that the beds are getting higher in the hotels because it's easier for the cleaning staff to make them and not injure their backs bending over which is fine right for a normal person to get into and out of a bed but if you have mobility issues or you're really short like I am combined with damn near impossible and it and luckily, Alan's strong enough still to be able to hoist me, but it's getting harder on us both. And I have to tell you that most hotels now do have higher beds. So be prepared for that, okay? So you want to take a holiday and you might want to do some camping because there's nothing, in my opinion, okay, nothing nicer to be able to see the countryside camping. But of course, if you're in a wheelchair, you're older, you have mobility problems, it's darn near impossible. But Fraser Way RV Rentals in BC and there are other companies that have limited wheelchair accessible RVs for rent. They're hard to find, but not impossible and they're not cheap. But you rent one for a week or two and enjoy the part of your country that you live in and it allows you to get out of the house where maybe you wouldn't be able to. And also, as we're just coming out of COVID, you may not want to be around a crowd of people or you may not want to be in an airplane. You may want a little bit of solidarity in your travel. And so camping really does allow that because of course, if you stay in a provincial campground or a state park, the camping spaces are distancing away. They're not one on top of each other. Sometimes private RPV parks can tend to be. We have a wheelchair accessible class B motorhome. It's got a lift and it's opened up our world because now as my health doesn't permit me to do long distance traveling on a plane. I just, I'm uncomfortable sitting. My back starts, my legs start, and it's just not worth it. Because for us, it's like a nine hour flight to get to London. Whereas if you already lived in Europe, it'd be like an hour or two hour flight to get to wherever you want to go in Europe. So it's a big difference, right? So I'm sort of not really talking about airplane travel here. There's tons of YouTube videos about how to travel in an airplane. It's it's hell, you know, but there's a couple of little stories. Kind of, this is all about stories, isn't it? But I just want to share with you. So one lady I know with multiple sclerosis was telephoned by her daughter who lives in Toronto to say, yay, your new grandbaby has arrived. And she just said, I'm coming. Now she uses a wheelchair. So when she gets to the airport, they have an aisle chair. You've probably seen them. They are very narrow, small little chairs that go between the aisles of the airplane. And if they're uncomfortable, they're horrid things. 
But as long as they know that you're in a wheelchair, they'll meet you with that aisle chair, they kind of bolt you in and you've got your arms above you like this. And you go down the narrow aisle and, and honestly, if you're a really obese person, I don't know how you're gonna do it. I'll just say that. So anyway, she gets into uh, the aisle seat. She can move into it and off they go. She has to go to the bathroom badly. And so she calls over the attendant and she said, excuse me, could you get me the aisle uh, wheelchair? I have to go to the, the use the facilities, which as you know, the bathrooms and airplanes are about the size of a tiny closet. It's really hard to get into one and it's really impossible to have assistance in one. So the woman looks at her and frowns and says, I'm sorry, ma'am, but we don't have uh, the aisle wheelchair on board. There's only two in the airport for domestic flights and they stay behind at the airport. And the lady says, well, what am I supposed to do? I have to go to the bathroom and I can't walk. She says, I don't know. You're just going to have to go in your seat, I guess. And walked away. Swear. I have another friend who travels with her father or did. He just passed away. They go to Mexico and he can stand <clears throat> But it's very difficult him to walk and, and with his balance. He's elderly. So what she did, and I thought was a brilliant idea, is she uses two overnight tennis or depends. And I'm going to add another thing to this too. Double diapered and a pad. And then make sure you're wearing a loose fitting shirt so that you don't look like a um, kind of pretend you're Santa. And have take a lightweight smallish blanket with you on the plane. So what my friends did with her father is when he went to the bathroom, she would tell the person ahead of her, my dad is going to stand up. He's going to use your seat to anchor himself to warn them, right? And he would stand up. She'd reach in, take out the pad, or if it was a severe urination, she would take off by breaking the seams. She could take off the diaper and then put another pad in place. He's used the little blanket to cover up. Now that's in a case where there is no way that he's gonna be able to get to the bathroom and there is no aisle chair to take him there. So that might work for you. The other thing you can do too for traveling is uh, our trains, and I think Amtrak too, they have wheelchair accessible sleeper rooms. Granted, if you use a sleeper, an accessible sleeper room on our Canadian trains, you're pretty much stuck in that room for the trip because you, your wheelchair is too narrow to go down the aisles. So just to warn you about that, but they will deliver the food to your room. If that's the way you prefer to travel, let's say you really are scared of flying or something like that. One thing that Ellen and I uh, discovered when it got too difficult for us to take long flights, I, I have so much difficulty sitting for hours on end, we decided to experiment and take a cruise. And we've taken a couple of them. They're a great way to travel. Now, I have to say, um, COVID has really turned us off them. Floating Petri dishes, we call them. Uh, pretty scary. And I've avoided taking them. But I'm warming up to it again. You unpack your bags and however long the cruise is, you get to be there. And the cruise ship personnel are incredible. They take such good care of you. I think they enjoy when I, because I, I travel with my little portable uh, wheelchair, electric chair too. And I think they like going to get it out of storage because they can race around the cafeteria or the restaurant in it. I like a cruise where you get on the boat, like if you take the um, seven day Alaska cruise or even go down to the Mexican Riviera, you get on the boat in Vancouver, get off the boat in Vancouver, or you do a one way repositioning cruise to the Panama Canal. You get on the boat in Fort Lauderdale and get off the boat in Vancouver. And then you can also, you can then get in certain ports, you can pick up uh, motorized small power chairs or scooters. Or even if, say, you're going to Las Vegas or Disneyland, the company is called Scoot Around and they'll have that scooter or motorized chair where you need it. So when we went to Disneyland, it was waiting for us at the hotel. We got a wheelchair accessible van to pick us up from the airport. We got to Disneyland. There was the chair waiting. On a cruise, same thing, but not every port has that availability. So you have to check ahead. Again, you know, doing your homework, right? But it makes for a great trip if you know that you've got everything that you need with you. Like if you need oxygen, you've got to plan for this stuff, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can't bury your head in the sand anymore, guys. Sorry. Sorry. Won't happen. Now you're ready to make your plans. You're going to sit down and spend some time talking with your partner that's going to be traveling with you and figure out where you want to go, dates you want to go. And of course, if it's a busy time of year, you got to book far ahead, especially if it's a popular location. And be ready to have some fun. Just be prepared. And as I said, there's certain things that you have to be prepared for. When you travel into another country or across borders, make sure your prescriptions are up to date and keep them in the original bottles. I also carry a small container with me where I put my pills for the day in, which I carry in my purse where, or my hmm, bum bag or belly bag, whatever you want to call it. But I use that bag for everything, like my passports, all my ID, my money, a list of my prescriptions, a list of emergency contact, and I keep that bag with me all the time when I'm out of the hotel or the house that we're renting because that's my lifeline to everything. Doctors, emergency meds, health issues, everything. And we also travel with complete travel and cancellation insurance. We hope we never need it, but you never know, right? So be prepared. I also um, travel with hand sanitizer, extra masks, extra incontinent supplies, and we also travel with uh, pads to put on the bed, and disposable pads, because you never know, for our protection and uh, the protection of the bed that we're sleeping on. I always travel with extra clothes, you know, a small umbrella, sunscreen, sunglasses, all that regular stuff. Now I give it more consideration. Because it's not a matter of me just running into a store when I need to replace something. It's, it's got to think ahead. We also travel, if we're in the vehicle, with a raised toilet seat so that if we end up in an Airbnb or a hotel and the toilet happens to be low, we've got a raised toilet seat. I also have an aluminum walker that doesn't have wheels so that I can use it if we end up in a place that doesn't have grab bars around the toilet or I need it to get in and out of help me in and out of bed. They take up room, and but they have to be thought about ahead of time. And boy, if you need it, you'll be so happy you have it. Clothes, diapers, a uh, small first aid kit, cream. I have a cream because sometimes I'll break out in a rash around my tummy area if I get moist. I mean, this is stuff you don't want to think about. I know it, guys. I do know for sure. But sometimes it's absolutely stuff you have to, whether you want to or not. And isn't it better to be prepared so that you can enjoy your holiday? Thanks so much for joining me today. If you haven't subscribed, think about doing so. If you get any any information out of this video that'll help you, comment. And if you have any ideas to share with others about traveling, when your mobility and age and in a wheelchair compromised, then do so. That would be wonderful. And to you new subscribers, thanks so much for joining our little team. We're a wonderful group of people. I'm not bragging, but we are. <laughs> thanks a lot. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye for now.